Hi everybody, Golden here at Bookworm here and in today's video interview with Ken Sprague we look at the sale of the original Gold's Gym to Pete Grimkowski who would later franchise Gold's Gym which allowed the opening up of locations around the world as well as Ken's last major influence in bodybuilding which was the birth of the National Physique Committee. Enjoy. Um, I mean... This kind of now leads me to um, your next big venture in, in bodybuilding, which was uh, capturing bodybuilding from the AAU. Um, how was it that you managed to do that and essentially end their almost 50-year grasp on amateur bodybuilding? Yeah. Well, out of uh, revenge. <laughs> <laughs> no, I... I uh... This was at a time when the Olympic committees were all international Olympic committee mm -hmm. demanded that affiliated countries had to divide their sports into separate sports committees. Mm -hmm. So that was a time when the AAU would have to shed bodybuilding, boxing, basketball into these separate committees. And so it was one that was a lucky situation that I came along at that time. Two, meaning that that was the very beginnings of the NPC AAU affiliation. Mm -hmm. So I uh, I was given a sanction, guys. This was my first big contest. I was given a sanction for the Mister California contest. I said, sure, I'll put it on for the local new committee in bodybuilding, if you want me to. I had no interest in, in being involved in bodybuilding promotions until then. Then the local committee, I find out, is all after they awarded me the sanction, all these political maturations, another barbell company wanted it, you know, to grow. They withdrew the sanction. I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> Anyway, I sued the local committee, the National AU, and within a year, I managed to worm myself into um, secretary of the NPC AAU group. Mm -hmm. And I essentially controlled the organization. Okay. And I knew Joe Weeder. I like Joe Weeder, coupled with my really true wanting to make bodybuilding better for the athletes, not have these two divisions tearing yeah. themselves apart, two, two camps, York and Weir, yeah. I decided well, I'm going to make the affiliation work with the IFPB. Yeah. And so I was kind of the inside guy with open intent intentions. I wanted it to happen, made no bones about that. And I thought it was best. And so I, I managed to do a little of this, a little of that, paid for, for um, voting members of this new group to come to a national meeting, not fix the vote, but <laughs> build the vote. Yeah. And so there was no way, you know, no, it was an amateur political organization. Yeah. And I understood politics. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the, uh, that was the end of AAU and the beginning of the NPC. Yeah, that was the very beginning. Yeah, yeah. And then later, uh, Ralph Countryman was the, chair the first chair i was his secretary ralph uh was a district attorney in oakland california he felt that we needed an image at the top someone that looked more like a bodybuilder he suggested me i said no i knew where that was going with the old cold stuff i said no i don't want to i don't want to put that into the mix and so we uh we got Mannion. We said, man, you run. I mean, and I managed to get the representatives at the national meeting. All the sports were still together at this time. I managed to, in, in their meeting location, I managed to get all the power lifters who had a right to vote in any boxing or bodybuilding. They had a right to vote in any of those groups. I said, you vote for Mannion and uh, against York's candidate, you vote for Mannion and I'll sponsor the 1977 and 78 National Powerlifting Championships. 
that was all it took for that. Mm. And, and once in, I, I wrote the rule book, uh, me and several other people. Once in, and I, I, I would not have done this now. It's easy to say I would not have done that. But I wrote the rules so that those in power effectively could never be given the boot. Sort of like Ben Weider would do or, yeah. <laughs> or some autocrat. And I picture myself completely opposite an autocrat. But, but anyway, that was the deal. And uh, uh, the cur the, the, those that were in power at the time, now I do not agree with what's going on. But uh, those in the power at the time, I thought I would be there, candidly. I thought I would be there and help Mannion hmm. along. But then I left, you know, yeah. as I mentioned the reason. Yeah. Well, that's uh, kind of where I'm at now um, with my questioning. So you've mentioned that um, your wife passed away and you just didn't have the, your heart anymore in bodybuilding. Um, but you remarried. Um, did your marriage to Donna have any effect in, as well in leaving bodybuilding or selling? Oh goals? yes, gosh yes. It was the final. It was the final factor that I factored in. Mm -hmm. She thought bodybuilding was nuts. <laughs> it's just plain nuts, and I had my doubts too. But, but I enjoyed it. But anyway, she thought it was nuts. Um, she was more or less um, a hippie, is what I would describe. And that the peace, love, you know, sort of thing. She had no idea. She didn't want anything really to do with business mm -hmm. herself. And I could, I thought, well, if I don't want this friction to start. Right? And so mm -hmm. I immediately, within, within six months, I had sold not just the gym, but everything, you know, I, different businesses I had. Mm -hmm. Um, how much do you mind if I ask how much did you sell Gold's Gym for? Don't uh, don't mind at all. This will be as incredible as me purchasing it for fifteen thousand dollars. And I've got to set yeah, I've got to set this up so you really understand why. Marion and Pete were friends. Marion was real you know, crotchety at times, but she and Pete just hit it off. And when she was um, when she was near death, she said, "If anybody, if you sell the gym, sell it to Pete." Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. And so I, in fact, I had never met his partners, Tim and Ed Connor. Never met them, but I knew Pete. I knew you know, what she thought, and I wanted to leave too. And uh, so I, I asked for an amount that would keep uh, keep him on his toes, but he could handle it. Mm -hmm. And remember this only included the broken down equipment. And of course, what was really valuable was the brand. The yeah. brand was that. I said, Pete, give me $100,000 and it's yours. Now I had, been, I had been offered, I had been offered for that same brand and that's why I'm saying it, it's, a, it's a matter of detail here. Incidentally, I'm happy I sold it to Pete. <laughs> I feel good about that. But uh, I had been offered three and a half million dollars. In fact, I was sued to sort of a mandate. I don't know where they were coming from to force the sale to this group for three and a half million dollars. Wow. Okay. You had to fight that, but uh, no. So coming in, I had to file litigation. Leaving, I had to file it. <laughs> and in between, there was a lot of litigation regarding the AU and, and people trying to grab the, the trademark of golds, et cetera. Yeah. But yes, that's the reason. So he got a deal. Obviously, he got a deal. But I, I feel good about that. And I don't need the money. I didn't at that time either. If I had, maybe it'd have been different. <laughs> yeah. I'm not that, all that altruistic. <laughs> so since marrying Donna, you sold Gold's Gym and your life changed. Um, oh, yeah. And again, congratulations on your almost 45 years of marriage. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, can we you... Have only been, we've only been apart three days in all that time. <laughs> Three days, literally, when she had to do a special um, 
seminar and I had to meet her the next day. And when her father died, she left. And I came down with her son. They, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Um, I'm sorry to take you off your. No, question. no, I understand what you're trying to say. I mean, I've been married since 2009. This will be my 14th, 15th year, 15th, 15th, something like that. Something like that. Long and, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, I've only ever been apart from my wife maybe a couple of weeks and that's because she'll take the kids to her parents uh -huh, uh -huh. during the holidays while I'm working. But, but I know, I think what you're trying to say is that um, you try not to spend time away because you love her so much. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's well, exactly equally, it. that's the way I feel. So yeah, I'm like, yeah. it happens. <laughs> yeah, it happens. And when it does, it's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, it is wonderful. Can you describe then what how your life has been since then? What you've done yourself with your wife since uh, sure. selling Gold's Gym? Sure. For uh, we went to move onto an island uh, in in the northwest of the United States, and uh, that was in 1980 when our little boy was born. Little boy became a 300 pounder. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> training but uh, anyway uh we stayed there two years because and, and the two older children that i had came up with us to the island and i realized really did that it's just not the right place to raise kids their opportunities aren't there you know mm -hmm. their school my uh, the oldest son was a junior in high school when he came up and um, the high school had a total of uh, 18 students. <laughs> and this is coming from big city, big city mm -hmm. basketball. And so the, the other students would come from the different islands and they'd all collect on Orcas Island for the school. It was that kind of arrangement. And so we started out on an island. Um, we came back to LA and got a condominium. Um, and on the border of West Hollywood and Beverly Hills. That was great. Uh, we traveled back and forth. And the oldest son, in around 1981, I think, went to the University of Oregon to play basketball in uh, Eugene, Oregon. We bought a house there to keep an eye on him <laughs> because the primary reason there, I've always been worried about him from the standpoint of being involved in this racial matrix. Mm -hmm. You know, he's fine. I mean, he's just a real nice, sweet guy. Six, seven, and now he weighs close to 300. He's eating too much. <laughs> but anyway, that that's kind of that, that trip. And finally, this oldest son that I mentioned, when our youngest son, who in Eugene, we raised, he, we stayed there until he left high school. He started as a kindergarten in Eugene. We were committed to stay with him until he's out of high school. And then he went to the Bay Area, to Stanford University. And my wife got lonely, you know, empty nest. And, and there were no Asian Americans in Eugene. So no cultural uh, uh, proximity. Mm. And so we followed our oldest son, who was now teaching outside of Atlanta, Georgia, to Atlanta, where we are now, Marietta, Georgia, which is a little bit outside. We bought our house sight unseen. First time I saw it is when we moved up with the moving truck. <laughs> but the goal was to be near you. So right. That's it. And, and close family, close family. I'm not the warmest, but the grandkids and the great kid grandkids, but we're all close. <laughs> hmm. That's good. It's great. Thanks, uh, Ken, uh, for letting me know more about uh, your life now. <laughs> and um, yeah, I mean, we've got just three minutes left, but you are now teaching, you said, and doing a little bit of uh, political activism. You, yeah. you said, right? I did teach up until about six years ago, at which time I retired and devote most of my free time to uh, politics. Mm -hmm. But uh, I taught um, everything from special education math 
to AP calculus, the entire gamut. In the special education, I like the behaviorally disordered kids. <laughs> so I would teach them math. And uh, of course, it weeds out when you get up to AP calculus. But uh, I enjoyed that. Social commitment, that's what it was all about. Hmm. And I volunteer track coach. <laughs> Great. So in a big school, so uh, that, and then of course the politics. I try to get good school board members elected, and I say good those that understand ed education and that yeah. sort of thing. Right, Obama. <laughs> yeah, you've mentioned that too. Yeah, Obama, and then now we've got another one coming up, and we'll see. My yeah. wife was the the face of two uh, senatorial candidates, both of whom won in Georgia, uh, John Ossoff and uh, Reverend Warnock. And we work a lot with the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. We're not, we're not religious, but that's a great group as far as activists. Mm. And uh, we're a uh, minute to go now. And I uh, just wanna, I think, wrap things up now. <laughs> okay. It's been uh, a very great conversation we've had. I really appreciated uh, speaking to you, meeting you in this form. And uh, I want to really thank you for uh, being so honest in answering all my questions and for giving me the time today to, to talk to you. So it's, it's really been a pleasure. Well, thank you. You resonated a niceness that, uh, that it's easy to respond to. It really is. And I really enjoyed this uh, conversation. Thank you. Um, I'm sure there'll be another time where we can talk again, but um, uh, if if you wouldn't mind in the future, I'm pretty sure it'd be great. Oh, that's fine with me. Fine. If you have follow-up questions or anything, just give a shout. Yeah, no worries. I'll worry. try to understand this uh, machine a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Well, before this runs out, just want to say thanks again and uh, wishing you a great rest of your Sunday. So that was Ken Sprague in what was the last section of our first interview. As we have learned, Ken's influence in bodybuilding was not only its promotion and the acquisition and expansion of Gold's Gym. Ken's final and probably most important action was capturing the AAU and creating the NPC, which would control amateur bodybuilding, bringing the warring camps of the IFBB and York Barbell together which changed and transformed the amateur division of bodybuilding forever. The amateur and political control of York was over, and the NPC was born. NPC athletes would then be allowed to compete in the professional divisions controlled by the IFBB. Ken would leave bodybuilding mainly due to his wife, Marion, tragically passing away from cancer. Ken was truly heartbroken, and this episode prompted both the sales of Gold's Gym and Ken's departure from the political side of bodybuilding. Ken sold the Gold's Gym brand and equipment to Pete Grimkowski for $100,000 and the original Gold's Gym location and 1006 Pacific Avenue in Venice itself was converted to a house where Ken would marry his present wife Donna. This photo shared to me by Ken is of his wedding with Donna in the newly converted house that was Gold's Gym. And believe it or not, the altar where they are standing is where Franco's Nautilus equipment would stand in the original Gold's Gym. In 1979, the second Gold's Gym in Santa Monica location opened briefly before the third location and current Gold's Gym would open in its current location in Hampton Drive as the Santa Monica location was simply too small. So I do hope you have enjoyed this series of interviews with Ken Sprague in what was in total our first interview, which, uh, I, was, which I was able to cover in seven separate uh, videos, simply because the first interview was really, really long. For me, it was a great pleasure. It's actually been a very great pleasure to speak to a true pioneer of the Iron Game. And I really have learned so much about the history of the sport through Ken and his incredible contribution to the fitness industry we enjoy today. If you have enjoyed this series, please give the video a like, subscribe and leave me your comments. I have subsequently interviewed Ken in what will be a second series of videos, which will be coming soon. 
For those that have been asking, yes, the Ken Waller series will be airing next on this channel, so stay tuned. You are going to love this series. That's it from me. This is the Golden Era Bookworm saying bye for now. Head to www.goldenerabookworm.com for the biggest range of classic old school bodybuilding books as ebooks, e magazines such as Iron Man and Reg Park Journal, high quality bodybuilding posters of the Golden Era stars, merchandise, and classic gym wear featuring Steve Reeves, Marvin Eda, John Grimmick, Reg Park, and many other Golden Era stars. For those wishing to build a classic physique, lose fat and build muscle, online training is also available. Collectibles such as rare autographed photos from the Golden Era stars are also available, and to collaborate, please get in touch. As a natural bodybuilder, it is imperative to know your own testosterone levels as they are a reflection of the anabolic environment created by your diet and training. I would highly recommend using the male hormone test kit from Let's Get Checked and make sure you use my code GOLDEN30 for a 30% discount. Again, the advantage of checking yourself regularly is that you will know how well your body is anabolically primed to put on the much desired muscle you are working for. Not all of us have the time to go to a gym or the opportunity to have a coach to teach us one-on-one, -on -one, but with the Future Fitness app, it's like having a personal trainer in your living room. From February 11th onwards, you can try the Future Fitness app for only $19 for the first month. Think of what you can accomplish during that first month. So go on and hit my link at tryfuture.co slash geb to get started. Now, if you're interested in learning more about Vince Gironda's approach to bodybuilding, his principles, and all these tips of wisdom that he has. But to be honest, these three books, I believe, which I call the Classic Physique Bundle, are the best books that Vince ever came out with. And they, of course, are the Wild Physique, the Master Series, and the Pro Series. Have a look at it this way. The Wild Physique, I believe, is like the ABCs of Vince Gironda's principles to bodybuilding. He teaches you the exercises and his principles, but how do you put them together? Well, the Master Series is a 14-month program of using all of these principles, all of the diets that Vince came out with, all of the exercises, and of course, the Pro Series was a book that he came out with later on, specially targeted for uh, getting into competition. It's just these, these three books, as I call it, the Classic Physique Bundle, uh, Vince's best work, and available, of course, at www.goldenerabookum.com.